there. Welcome to our afternoon webinar, Study Skills. Um, if you're new, we would love for you to um, pop into that question box and tell us where you're joining from. If you're a regular, you know the drill. We'll get started in just a couple of minutes, but as more people are joining, share where you're joining us from. My name is Mandy. I am coming to you from Oklahoma City today. I have team members on the call behind the scenes helping me out who are coming to you from all over the United States as well. So it looks like we have some from Florida, Hawaii, welcome Ron, Richard from Vegas. Uh, Bill, this is recorded, so you uh, will get a follow-up email and you can watch it um, with that link in the email. So I totally understand having a meeting now. Uh, John's from Texas. John, I'm a native Texan from the Houston area. Um, Matthew's joining us from Virginia. Thanks for joining us. We have a few more coming in uh, from Pennsylvania, from Tennessee. Welcome, y'all. So glad you're here. If you're just joining us, um, Find your control panel. It's usually kind of the orangey a rectangle with the white arrow. Click on that to expand it. Find that question box and then type in there and send to us where you're uh, joining us from. Frank coming to us from Illinois. Kimberly from Arizona. Welcome. James is from Long Beach, California. More from Illinois, North Carolina. So glad y'all are here today. So it looks like we just had a couple more people joining us. So if you just joined, uh, open your control panel with that orange box with the white arrow, find the question box and drop in there where you're joining us from today. So we have more, a lot of Illinois folks with us today. So glad y'all joined us. Uh, John's joining us from Georgia, welcome. Another from Florida. I grew up in the Fort Lauderdale area. I'm kind of biased. I love Texas and Florida, kind of where I grew up. Uh, Maryland, Bernie's from Illinois. Man, Illinois is, has a strong game on today. Um, William from California, welcome. Maryland. So glad y'all are joining us today. We're gonna take just about another minute as some more people are popping on. If you're just joining us, Open up your control panel with that orange box with the white arrow. Click on the question box and drop in there where you're joining us from. We'll use the question box a little later on today in our session. Um, more Georgia, welcome, Sean. Looks like Georgia and Illinois probably have the most uh, participants today. But as you can see, we have participants from all over the country joining us today. We'll give it just about 60 more seconds and we'll get started talking about study skills, self-regulation. So glad y'all joined us today. There's a California. So glad y'all are popping in. If you've just joined, find that question box, drop in there where you're joining us from. Like I said, I'm coming to you from uh, Oklahoma City area. Uh, supposedly it's our last 100 degree day of the year. So it looks like we made it through summer. Tomorrow should be in the 80s, so much better. I uh, hope you're having great weather wherever you're at. Um, I know I'm ready for fall, so we'll see what it's like. But it is time to get started. So thanks for finding those question boxes. Thanks for dropping in where you're joining us from. Oh, Scott just joined us from North Carolina. Welcome, Scott. All right, so we're gonna jump in. So as usual, my name is Mandy Green. I am a content specialist with Goodhart Wilcox. And today we're gonna to talk about study skills and really thinking about the self-regulation processes and strategies that we can use to help our learners. Like I always say, this may be unlike any other webinar you've attended, unless you're one of our regulars. So it really depends on participant interaction and participation to be successful. So we're gonna take this time to learn um, about some study skills and self-regulation, but we're also gonna learn from each other at the same time. So let's jump in. So 
to save time because y'all know these are really quick about 25 30 minute uh professional development webinars um, i went ahead and kind of made like a justified list so why do our students study and why do our students not study you know so why students study the course might be hard they might need to spend more time in the content for it to make sense they might be interested in the topic and they just take it on themselves they might be motivated Dated by grades or success or wanting to achieve some type of certification. Why don't they study? Maybe the course is too easy. Maybe they're just not interested in that topic. I don't know about you, but I remember sitting in one of my fourth grade classes that moved really slow and I read through most of the encyclopedias that year. Yes, it was encyclopedias. And then maybe they're just bored. So we're gonna take these ideas just as kind of a starting point for today's webinar. Now, what is the top reason of why students study? So you're gonna scan that QR code using the camera app on your smartphone, and you're going to cast your vote. There are four options. If you select other, please open up the question box and drop in your reason in the question box. Let's see why our students study. So as I open up this tool, we're using Mentimeter today, which you're familiar with if you've been on here before. Uh, we're using the uh, multiple choice setting today. So as more votes come in, you'll see the numbers will shift and change. Um, it looks like the top reason why our students study is because they're motivated to make good grades, followed by they're just interested in the course topic or the content. Um, I don't see any others popping in just yet, but I'll check the question box. But these are just some reasons. Oh, one for good grades. Yep, absolutely. So these are some reasons of why we think our students study. So this is going to be our starting point for today. Let's jump back to our presentation. So like I said, my name is Mandy Green. I am a content specialist, former classroom teacher, high school counselor, worked in CTE and instructional technology, and I did some research on effective pedagogical practices. Uh, we're just gonna explore some strategies today um, to support self-responsibility, self-regulation, and look at some study skills that we can help our students. All right, so y'all know I love some good research. So we kind of just took our own thoughts and beliefs about why students study. And now we're actually going to look at what some research says. So there's going to be a link in the chat, or you can just scan that QR code to access it as well. So this research really goes over um, self-regulation. You know, and in learning, self-regulation is really kind of defined as this self-directed process where students kind of transform like their mental abilities, their academic skills. Um, they also can generate their own thoughts, feelings, and behaviors about attaining certain goals or tasks. But when we look at self-regulated learners, we know that they do monitor their own learning to meet their goals, and they reflect on those goals and the effectiveness. We also know that they increase satisfaction and motivation as they are continually improving their learning process. As a result, self-regulated learners are actually more likely to succeed academically and to view their future more optimistically. So there is some research from Cleary and Zimmerman that also states that self-regulation is essential for academic and life skills. Most students really struggle with the self-discipline part that's needed to succeed in their studies. So let's kind of break the research apart just a little bit further. So they've taken it and they've defined it between self-regulation processes and self-regulation strategies. We know that learners are motivated and they can be motivated to enhance with high quality self-regulatory processes. These processes kind of have three phases. So there's kind of like the forethought, the performance, and then the self-regulation piece at the end. You know, the forethought is um, involves like your beliefs and what occurs before learning begins. The performance is actually what occurs during like the behavioral implementation of learning. And then that self-reflection phase um, 
really is at the end of the cycle. And we know that the cycle is continuous, right? So there's always this forethought, performance, self-regulation, and reflection. And it just goes in a cycle. We also know that successful students use strategies that can fall into a couple of categories. The research has defined them as personal strategies, behavioral strategies, and environmental strategies. So, you know, personal strategies are kind of how the students organize and interpret information where the behavioral strategies are more the actions that students are taking in that learning process and in the environmental strategies are how they seek help and how they structure that environment around them or how they set up their maybe study environment so we're going to take a look at those a little bit further and as we start to dive in i know we're all great educators and we have lots of valuable experiences to share so I want to hear what you're already doing in your class to promote self-regulation strategies. So if you'll scan that QR code with the camera app on your smartphone, it's going to open up a Padlet. And you're just going to share what you already do in your classroom that fall under these different categories. So you'll notice that there are categories set out that are personal, behavioral or environmental. So not the processes, but I went to the strategies. So all you're going to do is click the plus sign under each of the strategies. And then in that subject or below, type in what you already do in your classroom. For example, with goal setting, do you have set, set goals? Do you have students maybe set goals after taking a pretest? Like you're already doing that, right? In your learning environment, your classroom. So let's see what everyone's already doing. Um, so that we can share some great practices. So as I jump in the Padlet, Padlet is also free. There it goes. But as always with any of these instructional tech tools, be sure to check with your um, district or campus or school IT department to make sure they work on your network and that they're open for students to use. So as you can see, there's already some examples in here to kind of get your brain going. Um, but if I start with some of the ones that, towards the end, which are the more environmental ones, like how do students self-regulate by when they're seeking assistance, right? Like peer feedback, perfect. How do students self-regulate and set up their environmental structures? Like they're taking study breaks, absolutely. How do they seek information? Tests. So just like I mentioned, pre-test, post-test, all give that information about their learning process. So we're really looking at students, um, the self-learning process. Um, there's one for goal setting. So they have students discuss their goals that they have for the semester, the year, and after they graduate. Yes. So you're already doing so many of these things in your classroom. Um, if we look at, you know, like self-evaluating Having students highlight information as they're taking notes or in a book is a self-evaluating strategy that helps students regulate learning. If we look at memorizing using mnemonic devices. So it looks like some people are still kind of typing. So if you'll just scan that QR code, pop your responses in here. You know, as we look at some self-regulation strategies, uh, for organizing information, just having your students summarize the information. So at the very end of all of our webinars, we always do some sort of summary or reflection. And that's what we're doing. We're just organizing the information that we learned and kind of reflecting on it for the day, right? So let's see, uh, for memorizing that repetition piece, lots of mnemonics, games. Yes, games for, um, do give that sense of repetition or that practice that gives them that immediate feedback. If you use any of our Goodhart Wilcox titles and online digitally, you'll notice that we do have a companion site that has vocabulary e-flashcards, it has matching, has vocabulary activities, and those matching and vocabulary activities give that immediate feedback as they're working through that repetition in the learning process. Um, looks like we have, I don't know if we have any more coming in. We have some in the um, question box. Talking about highlighting, yes, highlighting is a great strategy to help students start to make sense of learning, kind of check where they're at. Absolutely. Uh, question and answer, yes, you can definitely do that. You know, where would question and answer fall on here? You could follow us 
few different places. You know, it could fall for the self-consequating, it could fall with the seeking information. Um, verbal quizzes, yes. So we have lots more coming in. Uh, Self-evaluating, there's also an activity to determine what kind of learner they are. Auditory, visual, kinesthetic, right? Which type of preferred learning style do we have? Absolutely. So I'll give you just about 30 more seconds to see if we have any more come in. I'm monitoring the question box and the Padlet online at the same time. So we'll see if we have any more pop in here. Also checking that chat box. We're just checking everything behind the scenes. Looks like highlighting is another one. So highlighting is kind of a common theme. A lot of people use highlighting to help students um, make sense of information, kind of evaluate what they know. So don't forget, so you have open on one of your tabs or on your smartphone, the link or the QR code to that piece of research. Be sure to, if you're online on a laptop, click that uh, favorites button to save it to your bookmark bar so you'll always have it. Or on your phone, uh, you can also bookmark it at the bottom. Uh, so just be sure you'll have that piece of research and information you can always refer back to as we move forward. Oh, there is one more, I'm gonna go right back. Something popped up on the Padlet as we were leaving. Let me see, there's one more. I love hearing what you're doing across the nation. So it did say, this is what my students would wait for, Ms. Green. Okay, uh, they select students to share their notes taken during lecture, having other students listen and compare notes. Absolutely. Um, that's a really cool idea or strategy to use, even um, picking up on what stuck with students, you know, because sometimes different pieces of the content stick with different students. Absolutely. Definitely a self-evaluating strategy. Perfect. Y'all are right on task. I love it. All right, let's keep going for the sake of time. All right, so we just saw what you're already doing. Oh, now in the question box, what, some, what are some of these strategies that you could do? So open up that question box once again. You have some of the strategies on the Padlet. You have the piece of research. Share with us something that you could do in your classroom to start really intentionally thinking about the self-regulation strategies and helping our students learn and make sense of co content. You know, so thinking about some of that research and thinking about some of those strategies, like highlighting seems to be a really common one with our participants today, but also then thinking about so how do I set up my classroom or my environment? How can I help model for my students what type of environment they might need to study in? Does it need to be quiet? Does it need to be collaborative? Does it need to be, where they work in isolation? Does it need to be with lots of light? Or does it need to be dark because maybe we're doing computer science and they like the dark rooms with all the programming? Um, so share with us in that question box. Um, let's see if we have any coming in. So I don't see it coming in just yet. It takes a few seconds for it to come in through that question box. But which strategy do you want to try with your students to see how it works? I will say my last year in the classroom, I switched to um, flexible seating to change up the arrangements to see how that worked with my students. Uh, we have one coming in the question box so far to really promote participation, right? We know from Dewey's research that the more students converse about content, student achievement increases. So promoting that participation to help promote student achievement, which then affects, affects um, studying, self-regulation. Absolutely. Y'all are right on track. Really appreciate your participation. Absolutely. All right. Let's jump to the next one. Y'all know I love, oh, here's another one, uh, use critical thinking. Yes, that's right on trend. You know, all schools seem to be really promoting higher order, higher level thinking questions and conversations. So really promoting the use of critical thinking can help students in their study process. So as they become self-regulated learners, uh, we can actually use that. All right, let's keep going, y'all. Oh, and here's a, big, a new one came in. Um, someone gave me this idea, I'm going to try. Older students come into the classroom and talk to new students about what to expect in the class. Absolutely. So then helping students make sense of their new environment, their new class, uh, maybe picking up on some strategies that worked for the older students that the new students could try. And maybe that's a strategy or a study skill they haven't tried before. Absolutely. Perfect. All right. You're gonna have one more chance to share. Are you ready? Okay, good. 
So today was really heavy on that research piece, like lots of really heavy research. Um, but I would love for you to summarize a takeaway from today. What are you taking away from the study skills session and talking about self-regulation and some of those strategies? So you're gonna share with us anonymously. So no one's gonna know who shared what. So you're gonna scan that QR code with your smartphone. It will access our Mentimeter. We have a different Mentimeter set up. It's an open response. So when you scan that, a box will pop up. Type in your takeaway. Ideally, try to keep it under 180 characters. This strategy is called a tweet up. We know Twitter now does not limit you to 180 characters, but we're just gonna pretend because that helps us summarize. And share with us in that Mentimeter what your takeaway is. I'll give you just a couple of seconds to scan that QR code. Once again, using Mentimeter, it is an educational technology tool. As always, check with your IT department to make sure it works on your network and it works um, with your students, it's open to your students to access. So just a moment and we'll pop over to that Mentimeter to see what some of your key takeaways were from today. While we're doing that, we just had another um, strategy pop in the question box. They're going to have students write down what they're learning. Yes. Sometimes that repetition between the hand and the mind working together. All right, let's jump over to our Mentimeter. So this is where your key takeaways from today are going to start popping up and being populated. You'll see that they're going to come up in three different categories as we have some pop up. And as more are added, they'll continue to grow. Um, so some key takeaways, new strategies for working with students, absolutely. Um, and really thinking about like self-regulation and how we can help promote that with our students, all backed by peer-reviewed research. Um, key takeaway that I am on the right track as an adult educator, yes. You know, that's part of what I always try to include in all these webinars is you're already doing so many great things that sometimes we just have new research backed verbiage to put words with what we're doing, but you're already doing great things. And we all have such valuable experiences to share with others to help each other out. So yes, I'm so glad you're on the right track. Uh, various methods to encourage and work with students to enhance their learning. Absolutely. Um, like I always say, I feel like I use the same three instructional strategies all the time in my classroom because I was comfortable with them and I was just stuck in a rut. And so it's really helpful to kind of get some new ideas from research and from other teachers and educators that you can use. Once again, explore new strategies for keeping students engaged. Yep, I have some in the question box too that are popping up that uh, they like to check for understanding with follow-up questions. So working on follow-up questions, yes. Uh, encourage students to set goals, absolutely. About um, six or seven years ago, as part of bringing a personalized learning program to the district that I worked in at the time, and that personalized learning program had students take a pretest and set goals for every single lesson. Um, and so it was really cool to see students have little post-it notes on their desk or table with their goal of what percentage of mastery they were going to achieve when they took their post-test and how many days it would take them to get there. So that was a really cool experience about students setting goals. Uh, the value of different technologies to cater to a wide range of learning styles, absolutely. Um, I tend to stick with Mentimeter and Padlet because they're my some of my favorites and they work really well on these short webinars. Um, but there are so many other ed tech tools that work really well. Um, if you ever wanna chat about that, feel free to email me. I'm more than happy to talk about ed tech tools. I worked in instructional technology as well and those are some of my favorite things to talk about when used um, instructionally, absolutely. Um, I think that's all the ones that are coming in so far. Um, I see a couple more in the question box, but I think we're gonna start wrapping up because y'all know I love a good summary and reflection. So you had a chance to kind of see what your key takeaway was, see what it was for others as well. Um, this is a good formative assessment to kind of see what's stuck with learners. So let's jump back to our slide deck and start wrapping up. All right, so let's talk about strategies because I'm always um, loving to share strategies that you can use in your classroom. Um, so we started with that justified list where I gave you three reasons why students study and why students do not study. Ideally, you'd want your participants to come up with that, that list, but for the sake of time today, I just came up with three reasons that I asked a few people around here and that's what they came up with. So ideally, you could use justified lists, have participants come up or students come up with their own list. 
Uh, we, then we voted, you know, so having that self uh, student choice, student voice heard as they voted when we used the Mentimeter. Uh, we did some kind of a share out. So always having students uh, share anonymously helps increase engagement. We did that tweet up. Uh, so ideally, you know, Twitter used to limit you to 180 characters. So it was great to summarize and have students kind of create a more concise reflection or summary of what they learned that day. So we did that short tweet up. We used Mentimeter to share anonymously as well. You could ask students write it down on a sticky note, you know, post it on a, the board or a poster as they walk out the door. Uh, there's lots of different ways to use that tweet up. You could actually even do it on a Google form and have students submit the form if you like to use Google products. So lots of ways to do a tweet up. Uh, the two main ed tech tools that we use today were Mentimeter and Padlet. We use the free version of both because I believe in using all the free tools possible. And then our research today was brought to us from the K20 Learn website. They had done some research on self-regulation, the processes and the strategies. And so that's the research that we pulled from today. A lot of it came from if you're Googling all the educational research, uh, Zimmerman has a lot on self-regulation and um, study skills a lot around the in, around the 2020 time frame. Uh, so you can check out some of Zimmerman's work. You can Google it as well. Uh, that's where our research came from today. Now, as always, um, there's a, we covered a lot really quickly. We have about three or four minutes left. Uh, don't forget that there will be an evaluation at the very end of this webinar as soon as we end it. So we would love some feedback. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. We'd love to hear how you're going to use these strategies so that we can constantly work on improving them to meet your needs. Um, if you have questions, this is a great time to start typing your questions in that chat box and we will get to them as quickly as we can. Um, if not, we really appreciate you joining us today to talk about self-regulation, to talk about um, the strategies that we can use to help our students enhance their study skills. As always, this is just a really quick 30 minute webinar to kind of just touch the surface. Um, if you want to go deeper into it, Feel free to email me and we can talk about other things. Uh, we can talk about other strategies to help you, but we are super glad you're here. Let me check the question box to see if we have any questions coming in uh, that we can get answered that might benefit the whole group. Um, I just see a lot of, yes, Benny, thank you. Have a great afternoon. Um, James, thank you. Have a great afternoon. Um, I think I don't see any questions. I will hang out for just about 30 more seconds. There's lots of thank yous coming in. So we appreciate you spending, you know, 25, 30 minutes with us. Hope you have a great afternoon. Great back to school season. Um, and don't forget, I will shut it down in about 30 seconds and that evaluation will pop up. Yes, this webinar will be uh, available to view later, Vinny. Um, that question has been asked several times. Uh, all you have to do is you'll get an email in about two days, one to two days after the, this ends. And it will have a link that you can register and view it again. Absolutely. All right, y'all. I think that's all I see. So appreciate you being here. Have an awesome day. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks.